For exclusive interviews right here, go. Go, 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 go. Ladies and gentlemen, here it is. The most listened to radio show on the planet. Is it Sugar Ray? Nah. Lisa Ray? No. (laughs) D-Ray? No. It's time for the LaDonna Ray Show. I'm so shy, shy, shy. The one and only sexy mama, LaDonna Ray. Welcome to the LaDonna Ray Show. Hey, you're tuned in to the LaDonna Ray Show, and I'm LaDonna Ray. And today, as you know, we are on our gazillionth episode, but we just started, right? How weird is that? So we talk to content creators from all over the world and those notables that we can actually verify. And one of the people that we've come across, Mr. Rick Party. What's up? What's up, LaDonna? (laughs) It is so good to have you. You know, let me just tell you, it's such an honor to be sitting here next to you virtually. Well, thank you. I mean, my pleasure. I mean, we we've known each other for a hundred years, but you were <laughs> you weren't even born yet. So no, you were no, twenty four no. now, right? Twenty, shh, yeah, yeah, twenty four, yeah, exactly, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I everybody knows the name Rick Party, and not only do they know the name, they know the voice. Right. You can't hide. And you have quite the reputation of being someone who has helped people in their music. I'm sorry, in their radio careers. Right. But where did that all come from? Like, did you just wake up one morning and go, I want to be on the radio? Because a little birdie told me a little story. Right. What does it mean want to be on the radio, right? You're asking? Yes. Well, it, it happened when I got kicked out of school and I used to call the radio station every single day. And the guy on the other end of the phone at the radio station, WBMX, was uh, Earl Boston. And he asked me one day, why are you calling me every single day? And I said, well, um, I'm sick. <clears throat> he said, don't give me that. Tell the truth. I said, well, quite honestly, I got kicked out of school, yada, yada, yada. He said, for what? And I told him why. And that wasn't anything bad. It was a bunch of gang problems at the time. And I just didn't want to go to school. And, you know, he gave me his life story and said how he became an auto mechanic, crushed his finger, became a DJ. That's how he was discovered. But this man, while he's working on the air, taking the time to talk to me, that made me want to be just like him. And that was the beginning of Rick Party on the radio. Earl Boston was his name, by the way. Who's uh, still in my life today. Mm -hmm. And that's a good thing. But um, like I said, a little birdie told me that it started even before then. You used to walk around at the age of five years old with a tape recorder and a microphone recording yourself. (laughs) Mm. You're going way back now. You're going way back. Okay. So my my cousin and I, Don, we would sit with these little, you know, tape recorders and record ourselves doing radio skits. We didn't know what we were doing. I mean, we we heard people speaking. So we'd make these little plays and imitate, you know, the guys that we heard on the radio like, Hey, this is Wolfman Jack and da 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 da. Hi, I'm Casey Kasem. Just all these little voices as young kids. And I think that's where it really, really started. My my passion for just hearing myself back, you know, without any headphones, just record, play. I think that's that that's where it started then. You gotta be right. Yeah. Where did you get that information from? Hmm, I'll never tell. Dude, so <laughs> Mm-hmm. You know, with with people out there like James Earl Jones, who had a speech impediment and, mm-hmm. you know, just knowing that you have quite this velvety voice that is heard all over the country when it comes to ESPN, BET, the list goes on. You too, all, you too had a speech impediment. How did you overcome that with the confidence of knowing that you could actually do radio? Um, well, it was tough. Um, I didn't know. And I think part of the speech impediment came from the learning disability. You know, I felt that everything that I'd say out of my mouth wouldn't come out right. So I was nervous about that. And then, you know, part of it, I just couldn't pronounce some words. My mom, she actually, you know, sent me to a special program in the summers so that I can get it right. In fact, she took me out of school. Probably I felt like it was a quarter or half the year where uh, we can kind of catch up with the other kids. And, you know, I, I felt myself learning and coming along and whomever my teacher was, I can't remember who, but they were special in our lives and, and they made us feel like it's not a problem. 
you're okay. You just need special attention and special love. And that was the, the many things that, that set me on the track to serving others and, and helping others. Mm-hmm. But yeah, that, that was it. And I used that, that what we would call weakness as a strength to help me overcome you know, some of my demons and that's to just speak in front of people. So, you know, as years would go on, I would then call the radio station because I think in the back of my mind, you know, I wanted to be able to do what I heard these guys on the radio do. 